and is large. So that uh, I have D and R, this the, the n-dimensional ball of radius R, S and R is the sphere of radius R, and the unit ball and the unit sphere, and so on and so forth. So there is some, uh, uh, there is some, uh, there's, there's some arithmetical detail and so on that I won't bother you with, but let's look at the equator of the unit sphere in n dimensions. Now what do I mean by an equator? Choose a coordinate, let's say x1. x1 equals zero is the equator. The sum of the squares of the variable is one on the surface, right? So x1 equals zero is well defined, that's the, this is the equator. The north pole then is x1 equal one, all the others are zero. The south pole is x1 equal minus one, all the others are zero. Well, very well defined. Now, I take a small belt, a very narrow belt around the equator. Now, what do you think happens when in very high dimension most of the area is in that small belt? And this is a phenomenon called concentration of measure. It has very important practical uh, uh, consequences. So let's look at the result. I, I won't let them go home in 48 minutes, so I'll skip the result, but they are there. But these are, uh, the punchline is that if you take a, a vector u in Sn, you fix it, and you take a vector x which is uniformly distributed, the random variable which is uniformly dis distributed on that unit sphere in n dimension. And now I take the, the that product of u and x, in other words, this will be the length of x in the direction of u. So I can take u to be x1, the north pole, south pole, and u, and, uh, and uh, the dot product of ux will be the deviation from the equator. When it is normally distributed with standard deviation 1 over the square root of n. As n goes to it, as n increases, the standard deviation becomes very small. It means all, practically all the area is concentrated in this narrow belt. I gave this lecture in September at the Technion, and this is what happens when the students are smarter than the professor. So immediately, a wise guy there named Daniel Marim suggested that if I take now the intersection of two equator belts, then it will also have, this intersection will also have everything. Most of the area will be in that intersection. How weird can it get? And here are the numbers, but the, the logic is very simple. Take, assume that the area of the, of the unit sphere is one, and the equator belt is also one, it's almost everything. So you take two equator belts, let's say one of them is x1 equals zero, the other one x2 equals zero, and a little on each side, so uh, what is the area of the of the union? It is one plus one minus the intersection. But this cannot be greater than the area of the sphere, which is one, and therefore the area of the intersection is greater than two minus one, which means it's greater than one. So the intersection also has everything. Okay, so here so are how many? I mean, can you bring it? I'll ask this guy when I meet him next. I don't know. Okay. This was too weird even for me, but... But you know, eventually it will sink, if you have yeah. another two equators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, now what is the practical significance of this? The practical significance is that in many algorithms, when you do a data analysis in high dimensions, and you have to the algorithms that are based on finding the nearest neighbor. If you take two random points in the, in, in the <coughs> unit sphere, the distance between them will be square root of 2. We concentrate on the square root of 2. So there is no nearest neighbor. So here I am in very high dimension. I look at the cloud of points. Let's say you are the points. And I cannot identify the nearest neighbor. Mm -hmm. Which means that the Euclidean norm is more or less useless in high dimension. This computer scientists know this. They call it curse of dimensionality. 
and it is advisable to work then with an L1 or anything that is less uh, less sensitive to the dimensionality. I want to show you, I think I have about eight No, I'm doing okay. Okay, now uh, another application of integrals is of course in probability finding densities and the problem here is to find if you have uh, a bunch of random variables, let's say n random variables with the joint density, and you have a function h of these variables, and uh, in particular, I want to be able to solve for one of them, so I, I assume that the partial of h with respect to one of them, xn, is not zero. It is required now to find the density of the random variable y, which is h of this, of this, uh, of the axis. Uh, typically, the axes are identically distributed. This would be too wild, uh, etc. So we know how to do it. We change variables from x1, xn to x1, xn minus 1, y, okay? Uh, and uh, there is the, 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 the Jacobian. Now it is the square Jacobian. We find the determinant and we get the density of h. So this is uh, well known. Uh, I do it the other way, using the volume. And now there is a detail that I will not uh, go into, but it may happen that the following combination does not depend on x. The following combination depends, you see it, it has uh, the partial of h inverse with respect to xi square, but I take the sum of them, so this, this combination does not depend on that. There may be some cancellation that, that does not depend on x, and then I can write the density of y, of the random variable y, as simply sum this constant a times the integral of the density of x on the surface where hx is equal to y. So this is a great uh, simplification. Now, when, when does this condition occur? Uh, this condition occurs in three cases. Two of them are very interesting. One of them is any linear combination. So I can get the probability density of any linear combination of random variables without going through convolution or whatever is used. Sum of squares. And if I combine the two, I can get a weighted sum of squares. And also the, expected, the ex exponential of uh, sum. Uh, OK, so here is a weird result. OK, so first, uh, for, the, for the sum of square, if y is the sum of squares of the axis, then the density of y is 1 over 2 square root of y times the integral of the x density on the sphere of radius square root of y. Okay? So this is the outcome of the result, and the, and the coefficient makes sense because 1 over 2 square root of y, uh, so to speak, this is the thickness of the sphere of radius square root of y because the difference between this square root of y plus dy and, and square root of y is 1 over 2 square root of y. So this is, uh, uh, does that make sense? Okay, here is a random variable, which is the sum of squares of two identical, independent, identically distributed random variable. Each one of them is u, 0, 1. The uniform distributed from 0 to 1. Uh, using my result, all I have to do is I have to integrate the density of the uniform density on the sphere of radius square root of y. In this case, it is a circle. Uh, I, I get a quarter of it. I don't get the other because it must be non negative And here, when I go greater than one, I get only part of this of this of the circle. So. Very other, I don't have even to integrate, I just have to calculate the, the length of this uh, arc. But this is the result. And here is the, here is the picture of the, the, picture of the density. So this 
So the density has a, is constant from 0 to 1, and then it drops to 0 along this curve pi fold minus r cosine of 1 square to 1. What makes this result very weird is that each one of these is very different. The, the density of x squared is actually this, is 1 over 2 square root y, which has a singularity at 0, but the singularity is harmless. So how do you get sum of two such random variables and you get this? I did not believe it, so I checked it with simulation and it worked. Now I believe it more, but it's still weird. And, uh, okay, what happens when you have three? Then, it is then it's wrong one again. So this is just a freak accident. Because when you have more than two, then it goes up and then it comes down. It's only one. So this is a quick uh, result. Uh, another result, and this has... Uh, is that a new result? It's not known? I'm sorry? It's not an old result? It's a new? It is a new result. Actually, I mentioned this lecture in September at the Technion. A uh, faculty member there, Nisha Weissman, uh, was impressed with this, and he calculated this for all n, uh, the sum of squares of the uniform, of the uniform random variable. So x my next to are both uniform distributions? Yeah, they're identical with the But well, there's something that should have been known a hundred years ago. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the sum of squares, I don't know. Yeah. Was it, is it known? No, I don't know. Why this but there is, <laughs> look at, there it's is amazing. A, here there is a weird result. Okay? You have the unit cube. Put it one uh, vertex at zero, 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 in Rn. Put the opposite vertex at one, 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 and, and touch, okay? Now, a, a guy goes from the zero, zero to the opposite uh, vertex. He makes steps according to the uniform distribution. But if x is uniformly distributed, zero, one, then one minus x is also uniformly distributed. So you can say that the guy, if this guy goes from zero, from the origin to the farthest vertex, then his girlfriend walks from the farthest uh, vertex to the origin by the same steps, because x and 1 minus x. If you use the Euclidean norm, they will never meet. This is a tragedy. Not the tragedy of the Euclidean norm. He will stay near the origin, she will stay near the 1 1 1. If they use the L1 norm, there's a happy end. But this takes me away from my serious lecture, so here is, uh, well now I'm doing better, now I go back to 500 BC, result of Archimedes, 500 or 400. Uh, the story here, and this actually is a problem in, uh, in statistical mechanics, we want to find the length of a projection of x on a, on a fixed line through the origin, again in the unit sphere, and we, know we can calculate what it is, and here are the results. Uh, for n equal 3, we get a uniform distribution. And this ties with the beautiful result of Archimedes that if you put a sphere inside the cylinder, okay, so it is tight inside the cylinder, and now you cut a slice perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder, the area of the slice on the cylinder is the same as the area of the slice on the circle. This is a very beautiful result. And this happens only in n equal 3. And mm -hmm. uh, when n increases, this result deteriorates, and you see that for a thousand, again, you have the concentration of measure. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have to earn our proof, right? So here are two applications. One of them is face recognition. And I'm not responsible for it. I copied it from the paper of these guys. And uh, the story is that you have a, an atlas, a catalog of faces, let's say, all the people that work at Rutgers. And now the, a new face appears. Maybe it is an old face. The question, does it belong? Is it part of the faces of Rutgers? And the answer, yes, if the volume, if the smallest volume of that face minus the other faces is less than epsilon. In other words, we represent the face as a matrix, 
and then we take the difference of the two. And actually, this, according to this guy, the volume works better than other norms for y. So the norm is the, Greek, is the green line. I personally doubt this uh, for the following reason. Volume is not stable. It's a very small singular value will kill it. You know, so that I doubt that they, unless they do something else, they sample the, they don't work with the whole volume, but maybe they start after 10 or 20 or 30 singular values. Or maybe faces, because they're around, they're not small singular values, who knows? <laughs> Uh, a more a deeper result is something called volume sampling. Uh, this is a so-called max vol problem, one of the list of problems that NP have. You want to approximate a matrix by a matrix that, uh, that has k rows. And, and actually, there is, this is a random uh, algorithm. We sample according to the, they say, the square of the volume of the simplex spanned by the matrix, but they don't know that uh, the volume of the simplex is just 1 over k factorial times the volume of the matrix. So they could have just worked with the volume of the matrix. I don't know how they compute the volume of the simplex, but it's easier to compute the volume of the matrix. Anyway, so if you sample according to this, then you are guaranteed that the expected result is quite good. And it is, they have an upper bound. And this is uh, it's called volume sampling, and this is given by, I think, Dash Pandey, the main author, and a uh, few of others. Uh, I have here a list of uh, application to integration. I took an easy, I, took, I, I made easy life here because power of integration is very uh, difficult. Like integration of surfaces, there are examples that. Even a small cylinder, if you triangulate it differently, you, get, uh, you can make its area infinite. So I avoided all these difficulties. And here is a reference of 100 plus items with many of them li live links. And uh, as I mentioned, if any of you want the slides, uh, well, they are here on this computer, but you can uh, get them from me at any time. So there's a phenomenon by the equator. Yes. So if you have n dimension, so it starts to be pronounced in what n, like n equals five. I, I did uh, with the uh, guy named Asamo. Yeah. Uh, we do uh, clustering of 50,000. It's, it's, not, it's not artificial. This is like people in genetics actually we look at. Uh, and there is, uh, you have, uh, choose random, two random vectors, the, the distance between the square root of two, which means that one of them, let's say, I chose the North Pole, and the other is on the equator where everything else is. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a real problem in and in, in high demand. 50,000 for sure, I think you already see it in 1,000. Because 1,000, if you have k equal 3 and n equal 1,000, square root of 1,000 is about 30. Mm -hmm. uh, so 3 over 30 is, a, is a 10. So the equator, plus or minus 0.1, and we'll have 99.7% uh, of the area. Yeah. Even in 1,000. 1,000 is a very small uh, dimension. And the tragedy by walking at the cube with a girlfriend, a boyfriend, uh, it started what end? Or what dimension? Again, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, in the 1,000. They yeah. will not meet. They will not, I don't know when in the first and when they will not yeah, meet, yeah, but yeah. in a thousand for sure. This is a, yeah. But for the medicine is still safe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have to write this up. Maybe yeah. I should yeah. write it in one of the, yeah. <laughs> one of the monthly morning magazines or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The same thing again. Yeah. I need to take time to more questions. Right?